Next up, Rick Steiner, Ted DiBiase in his corner, taking on Conan with Vincent in his corner. So think about that. Mm. The old million dollar man and Virgil on opposite ends here. Yeah. Again, they made we they made Ted DiBiase a star. Yes. And Virgil at that time. And we just did not. Here's a good question. Okay. Who made Ric Flair a bigger star? Us or them? Oh, clearly you guys. Okay. Yeah. Now, now that being said, Rick would tell you his second run with WWE, when he went back in 02, that's when he made, that's when he became most famous. Okay. He believes that run from 02 to 08, more people internationally worldwide became familiar with him than ever before. He doesn't think he would have enjoyed the fame and notoriety that he does today without that O two to 08 run. Okay. That's because of the WWE machine. Yes. Right. But you know, in, in fairness, when he went over to the company, it was late 91 and he leaves in the very beginning of 1993. So he was there just over a year. And I think everyone would agree. 92 was just wrought with scandal for WWE. It's a down year for business across the board, WCW, the WWF it's down for everybody, abysmal houses, revenues, falling ratings, dipping and controversy, ring boy stuff, steroid stuff, Mm -hmm. lots of bad stuff. And, and flares there in the middle of all that. But I'll often wonder, man, if he would have really made the jump and been at that first SummerSlam in 88, think about, I mean, that could have been Hogan flair at WrestleMania five. Hmm. That would have been unbelievable. Right. Like that 88, 89, 90, if he could have been around for all that, that could have been gigantic. Now that would have also meant in this alternate universe, he doesn't drop the belt to sting because that happened in 90. So he wouldn't have got a chance to really make him there, but you know, yeah. you could argue he did that enough on his own at the first clash of the champions as well in 88. Yeah. 